Washington Times front page for Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. House Republicans plan to use every remedy available to block a D.C. crime overhaul that would reduce maximum sentences for gun offenses, carjackings, and robberies. Tom Howe reports the bill gets rid of most mandatory minimum sentences and reduces maximum penalties for gun offenses and major crimes. It also allows jury trials for misdemeanors. The unfolding spat is particularly fraught because D.C. Democratic Mayor Muriel Bowser, a champion of autonomy for the district, tried to veto the bill over fears that it weakens criminal penalties while the city tries to restore public safety. The pledge by Republicans coincides with rising crime concerns in the nation's capital. It's also another sign that the new House majority will flex its constitutional right to oversee the district. A string of recent air travel nightmares is focusing attention on the long-delayed confirmation of a chief for the Federal Aviation Administration, with critics targeting his inexperience in the industry. Philip Washington faces questions about his qualifications for the job and his involvement in a corruption scandal dating to his tenure overseeing the Los Angeles Metro Transit system. Susan Fericcio reports Washington has decades of experience overseeing transit, but not specifically air transportation. He took over as chief executive officer of Denver International Airport in July 2021, after spending two decades running public transit in Denver and Los Angeles. He's also an Army veteran of nearly 25 years. The Democratic-led Senate failed to take up his nomination last year. President Biden renominated Washington on January 4th. Federal prosecutors announced that a former top FBI counterintelligence official who was involved in the Trump-Russia collusion investigation was arrested on charges of conspiring to violate U.S. sanctions on Russia. Jeff Mordock reports Charles McGonigal is accused of taking secret payments from a Russian billionaire in exchange for investigating a rival oligarch, according to court documents. He faces one count of violating U.S. sanctions, one count of money laundering, and two conspiracy counts. He pleaded not guilty to the counts. McGonigal is one of the highest-ranking FBI officials ever charged with a crime. He had been the special agent in charge of the FBI's counterintelligence division in New York. You can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. You can also find the entire lineup of Washington Times podcasts at WashingtonTimes.com slash podcasts. Poland, Romania, and the Baltic states sent Homeland Defense delegations to this year's SHOT Show Expo in Las Vegas to purchase some of the latest warfare offerings and related military gear. Bill Gertz reports Taiwan, Japan, and the Philippines were also among the foreign nations that sent delegations. More than 52,000 people attended the three-day event last week at the Venetian Resort and Casino, where more than 2,500 companies showed off arms and equipment. A Commerce Department official attending the trade show said 40 nations sent delegations to buy guns and related equipment. And finally, Mark Houck faces up to 11 years in prison as the Justice Department steps up federal prosecutions of abortion clinics. Valerie Richardson reports Houck was arrested by FBI agents at his home in Pennsylvania in September. Federal authorities charged him with violating the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, even though local prosecutors declined to pursue the case. Houck now faces up to 11 years in prison as the Justice Department steps up federal protections of abortion clinics. Last year, the department filed charges against nearly 30 anti-abortion activists. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo. Thank you.